So, how many tags do we have again? We got the Orman, we got the Baron, we got the other Baron. Ooh, super secret sister bonus! What is thy bidding, my master? There is great disturbance in the fort. The Vox Box Star Wars Podcast. Your source for Star Wars comics, news, and more. And now your host, Michael Corley. Welcome back to Voxbox Star Wars Comic Book Podcast. I'm your host, Michael Corley. Thank you so much for tuning in today. We are covering Star Wars number 35. It is titled Dark Lord's Gambit. We open with Darth Vader. Vader is torturing someone to tell him the name he has been searching for. That name is Luke Skywalker. The narrator tells us a long breath rasps from the Sith Lord's mask. In someone less awesome, it might almost have been a sigh. Two words, one name, almost anticlimactic, considering the long time it has taken him to learn it. We see that Vader has tortured a young rebel to get this name. He is contacting Captain Wormus, telling him, that the rebels no longer have a refueling station here, and the name of the T-65 pilot who destroyed the Death Star is no longer secret. Later, we see Darth Vader meeting with a new general, a General Tag. Now, oh, by the way, guys, sometimes I call him Tag, sometimes I call him Tag. I just, I give up. I give up. I can't keep it straight. I'm just going to call him Tag, okay? This is a new Tag. He is the new Baron. If you recall, the Baron Tag we knew and his brother Ormus had both died with a assault by the rebels. This particular Tag is deciding to get a little insolent with Darth Vader, and he rewards him with a force choke. However, he is saying congratulations that since your two brothers have died, Orman and Silas that you are now the Baron of the family. He's asking him, however, what happened with the attack on the cruiser. This tag is saying that even though they had set a trap for the rebels, as we could see from Star Wars 31 through 34, they were able to escape in a spice freighter that had speed and maneuverability that was not normally associated with that craft. We, of course, know he is referring to the Millennium Falcon. Darth Vader is furious. He's saying that was the one ship that had everything, the one ship that had Princess Leia on it, and the ship that cost him the Death Star. And Darth Vader tells him that he's weary of the Tag family and the Empire working at cross-purposes. And he shows him what is an absolute secret, Silas and Ormin. Tag, but they are not dead. They are in stasis. When their ship exploded, the compartment they were in was able to remain airtight. Even so, they would have died from a lack of oxygen, but the Empire found them and was able to restore their life functions to normal. Darth Vader is keeping them in stasis, and he's wondering if this younger brother, Tag, has become fond of the title of Baron. If he obeys Darth Vader. He will make sure that these two are never revived. And even though both of them should be in a deep, dreamless sleep, we see the face of Baron Tog twist in rage. Later, after the new Baron Tog has left, we see Captain Wormus asking Vader that he's a little surprised that Vader didn't destroy him utterly. And Vader is telling him that any petty tyrant can obliterate a foe. I am a master of the Force. From this moment on, an entire family now serves me as my pawns. Evil! We cut to Luke Skywalker. He is in his X-Wing, and there is a ship that is coming through to the Yavin base, but they have been surprised by TIE fighters. Luke, of course, flies into action to help out. He takes out several of the TIE fighters. We cut to Han Solo and Princess Leia. Princess Leia is recovering. Her leg was wounded in a adventure that it says they have yet to chronicle, so perhaps we'll get to that in a later date. Han and Leia and Chewbacca 
are coming to meet the ambassadors that have landed that Luke has just saved from the TIE fighters. We see the lead of these ambassadors is a young woman with red hair. And she says that she senses an aura about Luke. She takes him by his face and says that she is Sister Domina. She is a member of a religious order, a lot like nuns, called the Sacred Circle. Their home planet monastery worships the eternal, ever-renewing circle of life. But this has been disrupted by this galaxy-wide battle. And they have had envoys from the Empire. Specifically, she pulls up a hologram of Darth Vader. She is asking for a representative of the rebels to come and plead their case why they should side with the rebels over the Empire. General Dedana, very reasonably, is saying that Princess Leia is the most qualified to this with her experience in politics. But Luke wants to go. Why? Because he suspects Darth Vader will be there. And also, Sister Domina wants him to go. She senses that his openness and sincerity will be very useful on a planet like Monastery. Leia is a little upset with Dodana for sending Luke into this mission. And Dodana is saying, you know, they only want one emissary. But that doesn't mean that we can't send a ship to accompany him. We cut to Princess Leia and Han and Chewbacca and C-3PO are all on the Millennium Falcon. But C-3PO is communicating using his nipples, which is um <clears throat> very disturbing. I do not approve of that art choice. He is attempting to establish contact with R2-D2. However, he's having a little bit of trouble because R2-D2 is being pushed onto the ground. Because as soon as Sister Domina and Luke land, they are attacked by a giant winged creature. It is coming right at them. Fortunately, even though they do not allow weapons on this world, they allowed Luke to carry his lightsaber because in an age of blasters, it was considered only ceremonial. Luke is about to be in pitched battle with this flying creature, and you know what that means, ladies and gentlemen? That means it's time for... Dramatic Reenactment Sister Domina down! I think the Force of Planets ban on weapons didn't extend to my lightsaber, sister. I know that's because in an age of blasters it's considered just a ceremonial weapon. I just hope the Order of the Sacred Circle understands it. Preserving our lives seems like a worthwhile ceremony to me. That reading of Luke Skywalker coming to the rescue for a damsel in distress was by Scott Allen from the 501st Cast podcast. The 501st is geared primarily toward the women and men of the 501st Legion, the Vader's First, an all-volunteer Star Wars costuming organization who represents the bad guys of the Star Wars universe with movie-accurate costumes. Their podcast covers Star Wars news and upcoming 501st events. They are the bad guys doing good, and they have raised dollars for charity. You can find them at 501st.com slash podcast. Thanks, Scott. Sister Domina is saying the creature was called a night shrike and that usually it preys on creatures of the forest and that it must have gotten into the sun and been driven mad when a deep voice says, perhaps it is an omen, a hint of how disruptive to the natural order even one rebel can be. And sure enough, this is Luke Skywalker's first face-to-face -face with Darth Vader since he killed his mentor, Obi-Wan Kenobi. Now, Luke has promised to be nonviolent on this planet, but he is about to break that promise in his fit of rage. And he's saved by R2-D2. R2-D2 bumps into him and gets him to calm down for just a moment. Darth Vader is charming. In this role, he reminds me a lot of Victor Von Doom from the Marvel Universe, where he can be quite charming when he wants to be. He is taking Sister Domina's hand, and he is saying that an alliance with the Empire will help the Circle of Elders maintain balance with all living things. Luke is dejected as Darth Vader leaves because he let his anger get the better of him, and he's saying to Sister Domina that he is way out of his depths. And she's saying, no, no, only you can fulfill here what must be done. I know this as a priestess. 
and as a woman, and she kisses him on the cheek. Later, he is talking kind of to himself, but also to R2-D2, and this is being relayed to Han, Leia, and C-3PO. We see an annoyed look on Leia's face when he talks about how beautiful Sister Domina is. Later than that, we see a tower room where Sister Domina is alone with Darth Vader. She realizes that it was Darth Vader who used the Force to make that Night Shrike attack. Sister Domina is saying that she could tell that Luke is also familiar with the Force. This is the first inkling, by the way, that she may be Force-sensitive. Darth Vader is dismissive of this, saying that Luke is only a novice and a romantic. Sister Domina is somewhat reluctant about her plans to aid Darth Vader in destroying Luke Skywalker and the Rebellion. But Darth Vader is telling her that this is to avenge the two brothers who were killed by Luke Skywalker. A somewhat, um, shall we say, one-sided view of what actually happened. And he is saying especially the one brother who loved you most. And that is when we find out for certain this is the sister of the Tag brothers. And with her only knowing that Luke is responsible for two of her brother's death, she is going to aid Darth Vader in his destruction. As she leaves, he communicates with Captain Wormus, saying, My opening moves are complete. The players are all in position. Let the games truly begin. And that ends Star Wars number 35. We are going to have some real fun. And next week, I have a very special guest reader for you. So make sure and check that out. You have a wonderful day. And may the Force be with you. No! You failed, Your Highness. I am a Jedi. Like my father before me. So be it. Jedi. Thank you for listening to the Vox Box Star Wars Podcast. Go to voxboxpodcast.com to see panels from today's comic. Have a great day, and may the Force be with you. Scott Allen, a second reading of the second copy of the second copy of the